copy of 3.8 point X in the agenda with if there are more than two works in the same category that are episodes of the same dramatic presentation series or that are written works that have an author for single author works or two or more authors for co-authored works in common, only the two works in, the, in each category that have the most nominations shall appear on the final ballot. The addition being, the Worldcon Committee shall make best efforts to notify those who would have been finalists in the absence of this subsection to provide them an opportunity to withdraw. For the purposes of this exclusion, works withdrawn shall be ignored. That's how it reads if it were to go in right now. And a, a, a brief final explanation before I, I uh, um, finish the, the, the remarks from the committee. Um, the um, strikeout on the, on the last line of this uh, uh, by their authors, uh, author or authors in section 3.2.5, um, we added for clarity since there are other sections under which works may be withdrawn, and it was felt that that, that was just a, a tidying up that, that would have probably been suggested by the nitpicking and fly specking committee um, had we left that in anyway. Uh, Miss Olson, question for the committee? Go ahead. My name is Priscilla Olson, and um, the question is, because I'm not sure I understand this, is that if somebody by, um, after the uh, um, nominations, has four works on the, in the category, you get in touch with that person, that person decides if they want to toss out any of the works before you decide which to go on to the ballot. Yes. That, that is correct, and that, and, and that was, that we, we checked, since uh, uh, Mr. Eastlake was the maker of the original motion, we checked that that was the intent of the makers of the original motion, that that should be the case. Um, and so that, that is what we, uh, um, we uh, provided the amendment to, to do, and we believe it is a lesser change because it is effectively the current practice that, that um, those who appear on the, on the um, initial list of finalists are given the opportunity to withdraw any works. Thank you. Parliamentary inquiry? Yes, Mr. Buff. Does the chair feel, th uh, does the chair rule that this is in fact a lesser change? How did I know that question was coming? <laughs> <laughs> It is the chair's opinion that given that any potential Hugo finalist, if their work were to appear on the final ballot, is given the opportunity to withdraw that work or any number of works that person or persons is going to be nominated for, that this brings the amendment more in line with current practice and therefore is in fact a lesser change. Ms. Secor, for what purpose does the member rise? Appeal to the ruling of the chair, Mr. Chairman. So Ms. Secor has appealed the ruling of the chair. Mr. Buff has seconded along with other people. All right, I guess I get to make an opening statement and then you guys can debate it. Um, Pardon me, point of personal privilege, Mr. Chair, may I return to my seat? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if this yes. takes. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chairman, in, in, in as much as this, this is a good point, Kevin Stanley, uh, I was trying not to overdrive the mic. Mr. Chairman, uh, in as much as this is the first appeal we have handled at this series of meetings and the ser the, the I'd like to suggest that the chair review the procedure for dealing with an appeal because I know it's different than everything else we do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you do that while I do this. So. <laughs> yeah, I have a it's mostly just that people can only speak once except the chair who gets to speak right. last. Yeah. And then the, the motion Question is, is how shit. Or who is in favor of sustaining the chair? Right, yeah. Who's against? All chair. right, so this is how an appeal works. I, as the chair, get to give an opening statement. Everyone else can speak either in favor or against my ruling, but you only get to speak once. 
I get to speak at the end, if I so choose, and give a closing argument. So I get to speak twice. We will then put the question to the floor in the form of, shall the ruling of the chair be sustained? That means that if you vote aye, you are saying that the chair's ruling is correct. If you vote no, you are voting against the ruling of the chair. Does everybody understand that? It's a majority vote. Mr. Blog. How much time for debate? Is there a time limit on this? <laughs> it comes out of the eight minutes for the underlying motion. So I would ask the timekeeper to tell us how much time we have left. One minute, 15 seconds for the four and three minutes and 15 seconds for against. Mr. Matthews. Winton Matthews, could you clarify whether or not your particular ruling would mean that we could vote now or if it means that we have to wait another year if 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 which which way does it go thank you if my ruling is sustained the motion the motion could be ratified this year if the business meeting believes that this is a greater change that would mean that if the motion is voted up after the uh, debate on the ruling then that would be first passage, and this would go on to Worldcon 75 for ratification. I need to pass the amendment first. For what purpose does the member rise? I wish to move the additional time we have in debate. So, uh, how much time would you like to extend debate by? I would like to have four minutes evenly divided. Is there a second? Second. second. Undebatable. Is there any objection? All right, so this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of extending debate by four minutes, evenly divided, raise your hands. Hands down, all those opposed. I'm gonna say that's two-thirds and the ayes appear to have it and they do have it. Debate is extended by four minutes, evenly divided. Ms. Secor, for what purpose does the member rise? Please come to the microphone. Just to double check, it's, I'm Kate Secor. It's my understanding that the, if we pass the amendment and it is ruled to be a greater change, then the amended resolution would have to be re-ratified. If we don't pass the amendment, then we go back to voting on the original form, which would then be ratified in this meeting and take effect next year. Right. Yes. Okay, thank you. Did everybody understand that? No. Yeah. All right, so there are, Three things going on here. There is the chair's ruling, which is whether or not this is a lesser change. If it is decided to be a greater change, and then the business meeting passes the amendment that the committee has reported out, if the motion underneath of that is passed, that constitutes first passage. If it's a lesser change, it really doesn't matter if we pass the amendment because either way it's ratified. Does that, it changes the wording, but it doesn't change either first passage or ratification. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, for what purpose does the member rise? Point of information, uh, or please, please state your name. Uh, Ingvar Matson. Uh, the chair said that if the amendment is passed as a lesser change, the underlying resolution is ratified. You would have to pass the underlying motion. It so it's, 